Welcome everyone to the August 11th Amherst Massachusetts Conservation Commission meeting. Um, thanks for being here. Uh, I know it's hot in the middle of the summer and the motivation threshold is especially high tonight. So thanks everyone for coming. Um, I think the first item on the agenda is comments from me. I don't have any except, I think all of our hearings are being continued tonight. Is that right, Aaron? Yes. So as a preview, yes. if you haven't had a chance to look, of, look at everything, that's kind of a um, heads up. But we do have a list of, of other topics um, that might take a little bit of time, but hopefully we won't be at a late night tonight. I'm, I'm pulling for not late tonight. Um, so with that, uh, Dave, I think is on vacation, so he won't be here. Aaron, if you wanna go ahead and give us any updates. Our first hearing starts at which is continued starts at 7.30. So we have 25 minutes to get through some stuff. Yes, so let's do this. Um, so I included minutes for you guys uh, for the last two meetings. Um, one edit I will just note that I found is that on the, I think it's the July 14th minutes, I did not include the list of members present. So I will go back and add that. I just noticed that last minute, um, but that's the only edit that I, I was able to see unless anyone else has them. I move we approve the minutes for 71421. Second. Okay, voice vote. Larry. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Awesome. I'll do it again. I approve you. I move we approve the minutes for 72821. Seconded. Okay, voice vote. Uh, Larry. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I'm an aye. All right, excellent. Um, so we got a request for a land use application to use Mount Pollux for a wedding on January, or I'm sorry, on, um, wow, on September 16th at 4.30. Um, the only real concern that I had about this one was the number of cars. And I don't know if that's really of concern that late in the evening from 4.30 to 6.30, but it seemed like a lot of cars to take up the parking lot. I'm just sharing it with them. How many was it, Aaron? It was only 10 people. It was 10 four, people, four cars. Uh, four cars, yeah. Wasn't there a wedding coming up there shortly with like a van or something? There yeah. is. So this wedding is on the 16th, which is um, um, a Thursday evening. And then there's also a wedding on the 18th, um, which is a Saturday. So two days later, there's another wedding that's already been approved at that location. This one's a Thursday in the afternoon. Thursday afternoon. Yep. I mean, how many? What's the? I, I don't know. I mean, I what, think we live park in there. Six you could cars. probably get five. Probably get five or six cars in there. I'd say. I think is what Anna was gonna say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really. Right. My phone just started making lots of noises. Yeah. Like I mean, five. I'm not. Six. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. I like, think we should. Gonna, just do it. I think it's. Do it. I think it's a okay. Yeah. Okay. And if it, if it, most likely they won't be able to park there. So we'll figure yeah, it out. Right. Okay. The only thing that I just have a, maybe this doesn't impact this. Sorry. I'm always doing this, but like, just to make sure they know if there isn't parking there, you can't like park on the neighbor's property, park on the, you know, like just to make sure that's very clear. Um, yeah. The nearest parking would be like South Amherst common. Yep. You might mention that just mention um, they probably know this, but. Just yeah, they, like just in case there are like three people there they can't like say you have to leave because we have a wedding you know yep, yep. There's, is there parking on the back side like a couple no of i wish there was like there's on the uh, access from middle street there's no parking either no nope. you might in the process suggest they reduce the number of cars from four to three you know just mm -hmm. in case in case there's other people up there 
Yeah. I'm, well, I'm we could just saying yes to four, but just knowing that like, yeah. yeah, it's a risk that they take. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and then I would just encourage that maybe we just sort of include those standard boiler plate conditions that we typically include, like, you know, they have to clean up all of their trash. Um, you know, they, um, have to kind of leave it the way they found it. They should have the permit with them just in case, um, maybe put it in their car window or something like that. They got to pick up the wedding bouquet. Yeah. And then no vehicle access to the top of the hill. Um, you know, those sort of basic things for Mount Pollux. Sounds good. And they're also aware that the park's not closed to the public. Right. And they have to share it with the members of the public. Yeah. There's, there's like, I think six to 10 boilerplate kind of conditions that we included on the last one. <coughs> Similar to that. Perfect. Okay, we need a motion to approve land use application for a wedding on 916-21 at Mount Pollux. I move we approve this land use application for a wedding at Mount Pollux on September 16th, 2021 um, with the conditions as previously stated by Aaron. Second. Was that a second, Fletcher? Yeah. No, we both you. got it. I got you, Larry. <laughs> Voice vote, Fletcher. Aye. Roy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I'm an aye. All right. All right. Um, so this is going to be, I feel like, a fast night. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. So let's, let's talk about enforcement um, as long as we're here. Um, 375 pot wine. I'll give you guys kind of a quick rundown of what happened there. Um, we issued a certificate of compliance. The property was sold. The gentleman who bought the property um, within maybe a week or two started installing, preparing to install a paved driveway and not just a paved driveway, but expanding the driveway pretty significantly for the pavement. Um, I got a phone call from the building inspector basically saying they got a complaint and I was able to stop work before the pavement paving started, which was very lucky. Um, and I've been going back and forth with the new owner trying to figure out the best solution. He had, I put, told him basically, I didn't think it was worth kind of moving forward with the paved driveway because I know the previous applicant had proposed pavement and that it was denied in favor of gravel. And also I think that the previous applicant had asked for a larger driveway and that we had asked them to reduce the size. Mm -hmm. So for them to come back and expand the driveway and ask to pave it, I was afraid they were just spinning their wheels. Um, he did reach out to Bucky Sparkle and Bucky Sparkle basically told him the same thing because he was the representative for the previous owner. Um, they, where they're at right now is basically they'd like to restore it back to its previous condition and they said sometime next year, they'd like to come back with a proposal for pervious pavers. So they can, you know, try to present that um, next year once they have adequate engineering. Right now it's impossible to get an engineer. <laughs> it's just so busy out there. So um, basically my recommendation is as follows. They're, they are wanting to restore it, but they technically can't do any work because they are under a cease and desist right now. So um, my recommendation, and they were working with Ward Smith, was basically to issue them an enforcement order and in the enforcement order allow restoration of the driveway to its previous footprint, um, requiring erosion controls, um, requiring that it be um, you know, resituated in its previous um, driveway location and that um, it be stabilized with topsoil, seed, and mulch just like it was previously. So um, I don't know if anyone has any questions about it, but that was my recommendation of how we proceed just so they can do the work. Did they open it up pretty good? Yeah. Um, I guess they had to prep it before they paved it. So it, they, they, it was pretty wide. It just looks like packed gravel, but it is a larger footprint than what we originally approved. Yeah, and I don't know why. I, I did upload the pictures, but for whatever reason, they're not... Um, not okay it seems reasonable what you just said yeah yeah i've seen the site 
Um, I agree with the path Aaron chose. I think that that's the best possible plan. Um, and unless somebody has some strong objection to that, I think you just need a draft motion as Aaron highlighted on the screen. Okay, I'll um, move to issue an enforcement order to allow restoration of the driveway to its previous footprint. Erosion controls must be provided and the unauthorized driveway location must be stabilized with topsoil, seed, and mulch. Second. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Anna's got the second. <laughs> Voice vote. Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And aye for me. Okay. So now we're just getting warmed up here. Uh, you want to talk about Can't Nav? Um, <laughs> so the situation with Can't Nav is. Um, there is in your packets um, a report from Ward Smith. Ward did um, reach out to me, and I don't know why this is not um, letting me see it or pull it up. Um, they he's gone out. He he has evaluated the footprint of the wetland that was that was um, impacted by the work. Um, and he basically has come up with a, a restoration plan for how to restore that impacted wetland. So there has been effort made to put the restoration plan together. Um, where we left it with um, Pete Wilson was that he was supposed to submit a restoration plan uh, to restore the wetland to its previous footprint and also because there is suspicion that the wetland has expanded from its previous footprint um, that it'd be basically reflagged and that the they would have to um, get those flags picked up, put on an engineered plan, and see if it impacted any of the previously approved subdivision plan as far as stormwater was concerned. So they got sort of one piece of it done. This was supposed to be done by August 1st, uh, 2021. They got one piece of it done, which is the delineation and the restoration plan. However, um, the getting the plan on paper um, with an engineer's evaluation has not been done yet. So um, unfortunately, I mean, this is one, you know, we issued this in November of 2020. So this has been going on for a long time. Obviously nothing has been done to date as far as a restoration. It's just been sitting there. Um, I requested of them um, basically see if I can grab the email. Um, I was emailing with um, uh, Tom Reedy earlier today. Let me see. Oh, yeah, there he is. Um, so my request was that they, because I knew they weren't going to make the August 1st deadline, to submit whatever they had as far as the restoration plan so that we could take a look at it tonight. I recommend that they pro provided an email from a surveyor with a date certain of when the survey would be completed. And I also said, if you're requesting additional time for the engineer drawing, please request a definitive date by which the plan will be provided to us. I got the plan from Ward. That's basically the response I got. And then I emailed them again tonight because I hadn't heard anything back on the other items. And I heard from Tom Reedy on behalf of Pete saying, he was in touch with um, the surveyor, Randy Iser, and he would get a date of when he expects the work to be done. Um, but there was no word from Pete Wilson, the owner on it. Um, he just said he would defer to Pete on the engineering, but suspects an extension will be needed. Yeah, so Harold Eaton, like the surveyor now is like a six week lead time just to get surveyors on a site. So my guess is that there's a pretty good faith effort here. Um, but as you said earlier, Aaron, it's impossible. Everyone is super saturated. Like it's impossible to get help within a month basically with stuff like this right now. Um, 
unless you think it's that's not a good read of the situation well i i'm i'm empathetic to a degree but at the same time like in february i called randy Iser to say can you get out there to to survey the the wetland flagging and he's like yeah i could get out there this week and then you know the owner was saying he couldn't get out there he couldn't get out there their surveyor couldn't get out there and they never even called the surveyor who originally did Mm. the survey and it ended up being like late april before we heard anything from them um Mm. so there have been serious holdups on this and previously the lack of action we almost ended up having town council get involved to kind of put their foot down in terms of like trying to make something happen. If you guys recall, we actually instituted fines on this site in an effort to try to get them moving. Right. So R- while remind, I'm- remind me, this is restoration. That I, and as far as the property is concerned for what they want to do, that's gone back to square one, hasn't it? We're st- they're starting all over on that, aren't they? The area that they, so they, they basically leveled a whole section of wetland on the property right. so this and is, they this have is to restore restoration. that this is the restoration but in, but didn't we didn't we decide that they're going if they're going to make a request for a determination it's going all the way back to the beginning yes and no we thought that the order of conditions had expired but the state instituted what this tolling period which basically right. was almost like an That's automatic right. permit extension COVID. act yeah. due yeah. to covid and so while we thought it had expired there was this you know, um, go, um, act of the right the governor or whatever to to extend all permits, and so then all of a sudden the permit's valid again. Um, so the permit is still valid. The subdivision is still valid. The commission could revoke the order of conditions. I spoke to DEP about this. I'm not recommending that we do that, but I'm just saying in the event that they're not um, cooperative with this moving forward, the commission is within its rights to do that. Um, and I've, I told them that on site. Um, it's not the route, obviously, that I would recommend. We like to be, you know, to work with people. But the bottom line is this. It's been almost a year since the original enforcement order was issued. And what has been done is the flags were surveyed and we have a restoration plan, but or a plan, but not any action as far as instituting the restoration plan. Um, I would really recommend whatever we do moving forward that we set some pretty hard and fast deadlines. And I'm less concerned, to be honest with you, about the um, subdivision and more concerned about the wetland. So my recommendation would be that they basically have to implement this restoration plan immediately and start getting it underway to restore the damaged wetland. And beyond that, if they wanna move forward with the subdivision, they they know what they have to do and they can't move forward with the subdivision until that's done. So that's kind of where I stand with it. Well, they seem to be interested in stalling and not following through. So I agree with you. I know, but how can we be more urgent? I mean, I don't know, like, how, um, go ahead, Fletcher. I haven't really gone. Do you, how do you, how do you like the uh, restoration plan as is? I mean, we're talking, are they, I like re, like replacing that wetland that they paved over, filled in. Right. So, so to be honest species, with you, like they, they what they did was they converted a wetland. So it was right. originally a forested wetland, and now it's a sort of scrub shrub open open um, meadow wetland. It's kind of there's just nothing there. It's just kind of sparse, and there's standing water. I think getting it um, established. Oh, they didn't fill it. Oh, I thought they brought they, fill in. They, they went in they, there with heavy they equipment. Excavated. There's a picture of an excavator sitting in the middle of it. Right. So they definitely right, compacted right. it. I don't know if they actually brought in fill, but they definitely moved some okay. earth around as far as okay. on the site is concerned. Got it. Okay. Sorry, I thought they for some reason I was under the impression they brought in fill and like they were like, moving kind of, trees. Basically made like a hard packed driveway to get the equipment in. But well, it was no, heavy equipment and, and trees they were working on. But I, I think you raise a really important question Fletcher is should they be required to take out any volume of material that they brought in Um, and I'm not sure that that was anything that like 
unless there's pictures of people bringing in fill, um, unless we had topographic survey of the entire area returning to its previous condition is difficult. But what I, what I do know from looking at the site is that them taking out the trees made the site wetter. So it expanded mm -hmm. the footprint of the wetland pretty dramatically. And that was kind of like creating their own hardship. Um, and so now that that's done, what's done is done. And um, to me, the most important thing is revegetating it and get the, getting the system back to a healthy place um, so that it's functioning um, and maybe setting a deadline from which this restoration plan needs to be implemented. Um, I would say as soon as possible, like maybe by October 1st or October 15th would be a good deadline to say it need, these plantings need to be installed by then. But clearly this season, Right. Well, what is the, what would you say is the back end of the, of a fall planting season? <laughs> I mean, October 15th has historically been, um, but it, obviously now with things have been quite a bit warmer um, mm -hmm. and the growing season is definitely extended. I would say maybe closer to November 1st or November 15th, even it depends on the year. Is, is there an economic side of this? How much is all this going to cost the, the, the builder, the owner? That's not really part of I our... I know it's not a concern to us, but it's con it might be of concern in terms of stalling. Uh, the concern is, is it going to live? Yeah, that's like, why I was you plant about a red growing. oak in the middle of it. Like the, there's a lot of trees in this area. So if you have plant red oak, in a it's basically shaded. Like, it's I mean, like I they're trying them. to revegetate with early successional species and it's not going to be like an early successional species habitat. <sighs> I mean, red maple probably works, <laughs> you know, green ash, maybe. Maybe, you know, spice bush, maybe red oak, no birch, yeah, witch hazel, maybe hazelnut, maybe. Because it's too sunny, you guys think that it won't survive. Not sunny enough for the red That's oak. Sunny enough, yeah. Oh, red oak, you don't. Pl I think. I think obviously with the red oak, he's, he's it's the buffer zone. So I see what he's trying to get at, but like a more music oak. Yeah, but but I hear you. Try to get. I mean, but you're more concerned about just get this thing vegetated asap. It's and we're talking specifically, Aaron, the area that has expanded as well, or just that footprint that was on the original survey from the. They, you know, they the have to restore the wetland and the buffer zone that they were not permitted to alter to begin with. I mean, there the was- The current, the current, the current footprint, wetland footprint. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, cool. yeah, where it's expanded and, and into the buffer zone around it. With, I think the one exception that we made was that the driveway area that was approved, we wouldn't require them to restore that because if they're just putting a driveway in there, there's no point in planting it and restoring that area. So what's the smart thing to do here in terms of the wetland? So if the wetland currently, if it was a forest wetland and it is no longer, but it's still a perhaps wetter scrub shrub, shrub wetland, maybe not disturbing the wetland as it is and instead focusing on smart, like well-informed planting of the buffer to stabilize might be like a better use. Just looking through this list, like it's going to disturb if it's truly like a functioning scrub shrub wetland right now, which is kind of like looking at the topography, what it might be, then maybe disturbing that is not a good use of time and dollars and would actually hurt the wetland more. And what we should instead focus on is like improving the buffer and protecting the wetland, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I would look at somebody like the the 214 Pomeroy as a good yeah. example here like they they brush hogged and grubbed entire yeah. sections of wetland and the wetland was coming back you know in a short period of time yeah. but they did put in and granted they hit the jackpot in terms of when they installed the right plant, like right in the middle of the rainy season this spring and I went out there I'll show you pictures later tonight it is gorgeous and the plantings yeah. are thriving. I mean, it's the, right. probably the best instituted planting plan I've ever seen on a site. So from that standpoint, I'm like, eh, I, they've damaged the wetland. I think that they should be required to do the plantings in the wetland, but I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, from where I stand, if the plantings that they put in don't survive, they have to replace them if they don't, you know, 
if it less than 50% survive, they have to do some replanting anyways. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's don't a tough call, but I think that they back, damaged you know. it and they should, they should have to. Um, so I go something. back to the current uh, footprint. Are we in this, with this restoration plan, did we say anything about that? They have to, they're not resurveying this current wetland. So we, yes, they, they have, are. They could be, and that's what they, they're dragging they the heels on. Right. That's right. And so, but Ward Smith didn't do any, he just kind of delineated his own wetland basically and said, so we don't have like a plan view of this. Co correct. We don't have a drawing. Right. And that's right. Why I know we were just talking about that, but I just wanted to confirm that. No, I'm agreeing with you. I wish we did. Yeah. yeah. Michelle, did you try to, did you have something to add? I was just wondering what's coming back in a wetland. Is it like multiflora rose or is it mm -hmm. native species? Cause it's a great question. Yeah. I, I haven't uh -uh. seen any pictures of it. It's a, yeah, I'm trying to remember when our site visit was because I I could try to. Um, Gosh, was it June? It rain. might have been earlier than that. Right. Let me see if I can just get my finger on it really quickly. Um, if not, we can continue with discussing while I try to hunt it down. So the other way we could, other direction we could go here, just while Aaron's looking, is we could say, okay, we need a survey with a plan view of the restoration plan and location of plantings in by the state, so that we can like best evaluate use of restoration plant resources and how functional that will be in the wetland. Or we could just say whole hog, we want this restoration plan executed by X state. Yeah, I kind of changed my mind. It looks like we should probably get some stuff planted ASAP. You think so? I see like- but When was this? Campaign. What's the date of this, Erin? Um, do, 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 hold on just one sec. Um, it was 5, 7, 21. Yeah. <laughs> it, I'm sure it's come back quite a bit since then. Yeah we've had but you can see the stakes so this is where the previous wetland was located and then oh. you can see where a portion of it was filled so, or where the damage was done when the vehicle was sitting on it and I have those pictures I can show you guys once I'm done flipping through these I'll just I'll show Michelle because this is new to her this is the driveway location this photo mm -hmm. um, these are just taking pictures of some of the flags that they put to they we required them to reflag the site you can see the rutting where they, they had a vehicle so that's multi yeah, right there right? yeah i was people. just gonna yeah. say that's definitely so he's gonna have to i'm assuming if it's all rose now like they're gonna have to knock it back somehow to put the plantings in mm -hmm. yeah that's and it. i mean the longer we wait i think the more the rose is gonna start to oh dominate. it's probably already four feet tall right um, but Which I'll is Fletcher's favorite plant. Mm -hmm. What is it? Multiflora? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, Amazing. it's it's yeah. vicious, isn't it? <clears throat> I yeah. liked it. Th I liked it this morning when the mosquitoes were taking me away. In it. Um, so this I'll just do a site comparison um, for Michelle so she can see kind of the timeline of what the first photo is. Um, 8 4 2017 when the original delineation was done, top left. Um, top right, this is the photo. And what's interesting is see the tr tree leaning left um, over the excavator. You can kind of see it there. You can also see it in this picture. Mm -hmm. And you can also see it in this picture. Um, so you can see that the, um, the excavator is like right in the middle of the wetland. Like here's a picture with the stakes um, with the wetland boundary. So you can see that it's sitting right in the wetland. Okay, so I retract my feeling that maybe we shouldn't go into a what might be a functioning wetland and plant. I think we should fully restore. And I guess, given the two possible scenarios, one being we need a surveyed plan in order to evaluate the restoration plan, or we need you to institute this at, in this restoration plan ASAP, I guess I would go with the second option. Um, but if yeah. anyone has any other possible scenarios or ways to encourage us to be expedited or outstanding questions, please let me know. I mean, my recommendation would be say the plantings have to be done by October 1st. Mm -hmm. And then I would say 
this project, no work can begin on this subdivision until the flags for the wetland are picked up by survey and a revised or a, you know, a plan is provided to the Conservation Commission that's been evaluated by an engineer stating that it still will function as it was originally designed. Um, and that until we have that, basically the project is, is still in a cease and desist because then, long. yeah, because right. then, because then it's like, okay, well, if they decide to wait, then it's kind of at their own peril because eventually, even with the tolling period, it's going to expire. Yeah, so October 15th seems reasonable to me. Okay. Um, Two months. Yeah. Aaron said October 1st. <laughs> oh. Well, that's, that's okay. I mean, I, I was just throwing a date out, but um. That's fine. Well, I like the 15th January just took a bit. Yeah. Just then we can say like that's the end of the growing season. Mm -hmm. It's not arbitrary. Or end of the plant of reasonable planting season. Um okay. Does that give you enough to go with, Aaron? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. I'm glad that took a little time to, I'm, I'm glad we spent some time talking about it, to be honest, because it's been a while since we've visited this I apologize. This one. I feel like every time we talk about that site, it's Groundhog Day, and I have to be like reminded <laughs> about it, and I confuse it with other sites, and then once I remember which site it is, it's like, yeah, so I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. I was totally up to speed. I'm in the same boat. I'm always like, wait, can't nav. Yeah. Not the same one. I yeah. have to like pull it up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I continually call it Carver Ave because I get the, the names mixed they carved up. up a wetland. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to tell myself, can't. It's Canton. They can't work in the wetland. Can't do right. <laughs> we got you just get like little pictures with of all the neighbors that came on like uh, popsicle sticks. That's you know, honestly, you know. it's, I'm starting to get it by the names because I'm like, okay, Tom Reedy or, you know, like Bacon Wilson is with this one. And then, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to keep that. Yeah, I've got it now. Yeah. All right, so do we need to do any, no, we don't need to. I don't think so. I can convey this. I'll just put together sort of a formal correspondence and convey it to them that okay. this is the deadline and, you know, okay. take it from there, I guess. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Sounds but I think getting it restored by, by, you know, it's been, I think that the enforcement order was issued November 1st of last year. So if we can get it restored within a year, I'll be happy that we've actually taken, you know, that some action has taken place there. So okay. That's a great, great plan. Sounds good. Um all right. So it's 736. Is it okay if we um address the hearings at this point? Of course. Yep. Okay. So our first hearing um, was scheduled for 7.30 and it was the um, ANRAD, so SWCA for Confirmation of Resource Area Boundaries at 52 Fearing Street, 336 and 346 North Pleasant Street. Um, so this is from maybe a couple of meetings ago and it sounds like they requested a continuation. Um, so unless I see we have four attendees I don't recognize anyone from that project. Aaron, do you? Hey, let me stop sharing so I can see who we have. Um, Edwin Genser is a um, an abutter. Okay, so um, if anyone, so what will happen now is we'll continue the hearing to uh, our next meeting on August twenty fifth at seven forty p.m. Um, Edwin, if you have any comments or questions, um, you can raise your hand now and ask them. Otherwise, we'll move to continue the hearing and encourage you to join us again um, on August 25th. Oh, okay. Edwin, I'm going to give you a chance to talk. Give me a second. So, Will oh, the work we've um, asked and, be done by then? Aaron, I think you have to make me a co-host. Oh, I'm or, sorry. Or you have to give Edwin the chance to talk. Talk. Sorry. That's okay. And bye. All right. Edwin can speak. Okay. We can, you've joined unmute us. Your, unmute yourself. Hello, I'm Edwin. I'm in the butter. I live uh, 
at 43 Fearing Street. And uh, I don't really have much more news to report. I do want to say that uh, I've been uh, irritating the committee with these emails and uh, Aaron has been so polite in answering them. And I'm really impressed with how seriously you're taking this matter and you came out and did a site visit. And uh, um, I'm really pleased uh, with all the work that you have on your plate that you're taking this issue so seriously. Um, the water has pretty much receded now. The brook is bubbling along um, and um, it's still very pleasant here. Um, and uh, I, uh, I just, uh, I just want to say thank you for your taking this so seriously and getting a, uh, an outside reviewer to come in and take a look at this. I think uh, the neighborhood will breathe more easily knowing that you're, uh, you're, you're working on this. So thank you. Great, thank you, Edwin, and thank you for coming. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing um, what comes out of that third-party review. Um, so again, yeah, if you would just plan to join us on the 25th at 740 would be when we would continue this hearing too. And hopefully we'll have heard from SWCA with a third party review by then. Uh, is it, I, I don't, is, I, I thought that SWCA was not going to be doing the third party review or am I hearing something different? Emily Stockman is going to be doing, doing the review. review. SWCA is the original. Um, Sorry. Right. That's what I The original oh, consultant. Thank you. Excuse thank me. Thank you. Okay. That's all. All right. Do you think that'll be here by that time? Uh, it's difficult for me to say. The, the check was given to the treasurer's office, received by the treasurer's office. It's really, it's with procurement right now. And um, I know that they're short staffed. So. Um, I did, I sent them an email today asking, um, letting them know that we're, you know, we're ready to go and um, encouraging that hopefully we can move forward as quickly as possible. Um, but I would say let's continue in the hope that we will, everything will move forward by then. Um, and yeah, we'll take it from there. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for coordinating that, Aaron. Thank you, Edwin. Hopefully we'll see you on the 25th. Good. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, so with that, we just need a motion to continue this hearing. Two, move, eight. Oops, sorry. Go ahead, Anna. All right, I was gonna say, I move we continue the hearing for, um, wait, not 52 Fearing Street, isn't it? Yeah, yep. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, yes. My God, my brain. Easy peasy lemon difficult, y'all. I move we continue the hearing for 52 Fearing Street to August 25th at 7.40 p.m. Sorry. Second. Thank you. Okay, voice vote. Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I am an I. All right, cruising on. Um, the next is the NOI for um, new footbridges, bog bridges, replacement of footbridges, et cetera, um, at various locations on the Robert Frost Trail. And it sounds like, Aaron, we still want to continue that one. So um, Brad, um, our land manager, and, and Brendan are here to present. Um, and so what I'd like to do is um, allow them to sort of present the project um, so that you guys can get a sense of what's going on. And then we're still waiting on DEP comments. So that'll give us a chance to review DEP comments, get responses. And if you guys want to schedule a site visit after you see the plans, then we can schedule a site visit if you're comfortable. Um, I've seen all the sites. Obviously all the staff has seen the sites. It's relatively minor work. Um, okay. All right, then I just promoted Brad and Brendan. Hi, Brad, the panelists. Oh. Hello. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Hi, Brendan, we can see you too. Hello. Hi. Um, so yeah, I think, I don't know if Michelle has, has met you guys yet. Um, we have a new um, commissioner, Michelle. So if you guys just wanna introduce yourselves quickly and then explain the project, that would be great. So I'm Brad Bordewick. I'm the land manager with the conservation department. 
I'm Brendan Kelly and I'm the assistant land manager with uh, the conservation department. Is now a good time to talk about the project? Yeah, sure. And Michelle, just some, for some background, Brad usually joins us kind of once every six months to give us updates on like various um, activities and management and maintenance and all the work they're doing out there to maintain the conservation land. The right this time of year is a super hectic time for them. So we don't usually even see them this time of year, um, but we'll hear more from them um, probably once the snow flies um, after when they can no longer be mowing. Um, <laughs> so you'll get a chance to talk to them more then, but just as a little bit of background. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're go ahead. Actually, so we're actually hoping to do a, uh, a kind of meet and greet with you guys on this platform uh, pretty soon, maybe in like the end of the fall. Like you All were right. saying, it would be good to show you some pictures of the stuff we've been doing. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So as Sorry, far I was as just this, trying to get that? a map, I was just trying to get a map up so that you could just get an overview of the locations. Um, there it is. Okay, take it away, Brad. All right. So our goal is to install four bog bridges along the Robert Frost Trail. Two of them are going to replace bridges that are already there now, but they're kind of in unsafe condition. And then two of them are going to be proposed new bridges over areas that are wetlands with heavy traffic from the Robert Frost Trail. So one of them has some random boards or sticks uh, that you know people kind of jump from stick to stick or board to board over. Um, and the other one that's proposed is uh, people are just kind of hopping between roots or trampling through the mud. Um, uh, the new bridges that we're proposing on all these are going to be constructed with pressure treated lumber. Oh, that's a good picture of it, actually. That one is the one over in Bayberry. Um, so, yeah, the bridges are going to be constructed using pressure treated lumber. Most of the lumber is going to be uh, pre cut off site, and then we'll haul it into the wetland to uh, put together. The goal overall is to protect the wetlands by installing the bridges over them, just so the traffic goes on the bridge and not trampling through the wetland, damaging it. Uh, we've had a ton of traffic this year on the trails, so it's, it's a pretty good time to be doing this. Uh, one of the bridges, as Aaron noted, is in Lawrence Swamp down south. Uh, two are in Bayberry, kind of in the middle of town, just below Amethyst Brook. And uh, one of them is farther up north on uh, just off Flat Hills Road. That's kind of the gist of it. So um, just to kind of take it to connect the photos with the with the plans. Um, this is site one on the map that I shared. Um, so this is the one that's furthest south um, that's down off of Station Road. Um, and so the plan is there's an existing bridge there. That's the one um, where it shows it's like about to collapse there. Um, so this is this bridge. And then um, taking, removing that and um, replacing it. These, the sites were all delineated by Art Allen. Okay, that was my main question was just to make sure we're being consistent. So as long as we've got them all delineated and we're well outside bank full. Yep. That sounds good. Um, site two was so these are the two bayberry ones that um brad was referencing two and three they're um sort of west of echo hill and south of amethyst brook on the robert frost trail and um one of them is an existing footbridge that is similar similar to the other one noted um needs to be replaced and then site number three is um basically an existing footpath that just is going through the wetland um, and there's a lot of damage there. So the idea would be to concentrate foot traffic on a proposed bog bridge and all of the, so the footings, um, in this case, one footing is proposed in the wetland and two, one is also on, on either side of the wetland in the buffer. But the idea is to restore this area of damage. And then site number okay so i'm sorry so that's that's site number three there so you can see that it's definitely getting a lot of um 
um, erosion. And then this is site number four. This one is up off of Flat Hills um, up here, uh, just west of Flat Hills on the Robert Frost Trail. And um, this one is another one that's kind of a really intensely damaged wetland from foot traffic. And the idea is to concentrate um, foot traffic over a bog bridge. There would be three footings placed in the wetland on this one. Um, and then the areas in green and blue would be restored. So the wetland, the bank, and land underwater would be restored. And just to talk a little bit about alteration and restoration numbers so you guys can get a sense of that. That's what I wanted. Um, Sorry, I don't want to jump ahead here. So you guys no, got please. DEP comments? No, on this? not yet. We did, did not get them yet. Oh, did not get them yet. Right. Got it. Yeah. Um, so we were looking at this as a as a mitigation project because of the number one, the two the two foot bridges that are existing are really damaging the bank, and the idea is to lift them up put the footings outside of the bank and then restore the banks that are damaged. And you guys saw those photos. The other areas are heavy foot traffic damaging the wetland. Um, and so the idea is to concentrate foot traffic over these bog bridges. And so as you can see, like these are the restoration numbers. So for bank 93 square feet, for the wetland 1147 square feet, land underwater 1192 square feet, boarding land subject to flooding, uh, 20 square feet. And then for alteration, seven square feet. Um, the only area where there's really a proposed alteration that's significant is on site number one, which is located in 100 year flood zone. And it's because the bridge is increasing in size. And so we have to account for the square footage of the increase in volume from the bridge construction. Um, we're trying to lift it up so it's higher outside, you know, to get it up high so that it's outside of the outside of the bank and hopefully outside of the flood zone as well. We don't have elevations out there because these are not surveyed points. Um, but we are still trying to figure out where we would compensate for the flood storage. That's um, another to be determined item that we're trying to work out. And what time of year are you guys thinking of doing this? Are you going to try to get it in this fall? Yes, we are. Okay. And flows are dropping, so it should be okay. Pretty soon here. Any other questions? Was that it, Aaron and Brad for or, and Brendan for any info? Yeah, I mean, this is a super simple trail restoration tr mitigation project. I think we're just trying to really dot our I's and cross our T's in the same way that we ask every applicant to. So that's really I was what thinking about the Amherst College application process when I was double checking about bank fall dimensions and things like that. So thank you for being diligent. Is there anything you're worried about, Brad, on this in terms of logistics or anything else? No, I think it should be pretty simple and straightforward, actually. Okay, great. Any questions from the commission? Okay, so it sounds like as soon as we get DEP comments, we'll see you guys again, most likely. Um, but otherwise, unless anyone had any comments, David Haynes is here, but I'm guessing that's for um, Pomeroy. So um, yeah, so I don't think we have any public comments. So we are just looking for a motion to continue this hearing. I move we continue the hearing for the Robert Frost Trail improvements to uh, August 25th at 745. Second. All right, voice vote Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Uh, oh, the order, sorry, Anna. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Uh, who did I miss? Aye for me. Leroy, thanks Leroy. And then I'm an aye, thanks. Great. All right. Thank you, Brad, and thanks, uh, Brad. Brendan thanks, for jumping Brad. on tonight. Nice to yeah, meet you. Yeah, thanks, guys. guys. Keep up the good work. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us on. The, the other thing, you guys, if you have a chance, you should check out that Stanley Street parking lot. Mm -hmm. It looks just great. Finished it up. It came out pretty good. It does look great. Beautiful job. Thank you. Yeah, awesome job. Oh, good. Oh, good.
I also saw you guys have been working on the KC Trail coming down onto Hot Brook. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's coming soon. Yeah, I'm guessing. All right, hang in there. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, have a good one. You too. You already did it, okay, cool. All right, last hearing on the agenda. Yes. Um, so this is 214 Pomeroy Lane. It looks like Aaron, you were out there and have some site photos. We're yes. still waiting on comments from National Heritage. So it sounds like we're gonna continue, but I also see David is here. Um, so I will promote him to a panelist while we're discussing this in case he has anything to contribute. Yeah, and there was a, a memo from um, their council as well, just sort of on interpreting um, the, the regs um, in terms of the commission's sort of variances and um, uh, limited project determinations. So mm -hmm. it was kind of a lot of legal language, but I'm sure um, Dave can break that down into more um, digestible bites. And um, I will flip through these photos while Dave is talking. Let me, is Dave there? Oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh, good evening. Um, nice to see you all and impressed with watching you guys. You're very effective. Um, the, uh, and, and the legalese, I, I, I will try to paraphrase it. It, That's legalese. I've got a whole nother section of, of stuff that I presented. Um, this is the wetland restoration area. These are really, they came out well. Uh, Aaron is absolutely right. It's a, it's a, a combination of the really good plants and uh, from wetland, uh, New England wetland plants. And also the, the fact that when we did this planting, it was absolutely pouring, pouring rain in a thunderstorm. And uh, we and it stayed stayed raining for about three or four weeks after that, and uh, it, it turned out really well. Uh, good success rate. We did not in this area. We did not. Uh, the The plan called for putting um, uh, silky dogwood in, along with winterberry and highbush blueberry, uh, and uh, with all speckled alder. Um, there was so much regeneration of the uh, uh, silky dogwood that was taking place. We did not plant anymore. We've got a very good density um, of the of the vegetation. It's it's you're going to be happy with it. Um, also, this photograph shows that the the stakes and the monumentation have been installed. They were installed. Everything has been done according to the timeline that was in the restoration plan. So we're on top of that. The only thing lacking so far is me submitting a, a monitoring report, uh, which I do want to get to you soon. Um, also the, the um, area in the riverfront area was restored. Uh, that's also within the natural heritage habitat. Um, so that, that has been done. Um, the owner applicant is, has, we've discussed, uh, there are a few invasives that are coming in. There's a little bit of purple loose strife in here. Uh, the owner was going to take care of that. There is some uh, um, uh, multiflora rose, which we all love, and uh, that, that we will take care of appropriately a little bit later. Um, there's also some um, bittersweet and other th and multiflora coming in in the uh, uh, riverfront area, natural heritage area that, that the owner will will be taking care of that. That's part of the restoration plan. So anyway, we, we're doing well with that. The proposed uh, and so the notice of, that's the restoration plan. The notice of intent is for the ag restoration of the agricultural land and agricultural use on the property and the buildings, just as a, as a quick summary. Uh, snagging point or discussion item last time came up about, we are requesting to actually go down to 
basically the wetland boundary, but leave a five foot on undisturbed soil uh, layer outside of it. And question came up about how was that justified and why, how could you do that? And so I prepared a, a letter uh, outlining why, justifying why we should be given a, a variance for that. And I've also included in there an opinion from attorney Michael Pill that states basically he, in his opinion, the, um, the, the requirement of a vegetative buffer does not apply to agricultural land as per year, but that's a, that's a legal thing. But I just want to say that, that what we're doing here is they're trying to restore this area to a, a piece of uh, farmland. It was farmland. Historically, it was farmland back. I mean, they, they, everybody uses the date 1941, and that's when the previous owner bought it and started farming it and used it as a poor farm. But historically, and, and this, has been a, this has been farmland uh, since colonial times, and we all know that all, all, the, all the land has been. So anyway, but this, this I wanted to document where the, this was farmland until the previous owner died about 12 years ago, and it fell out of use as agriculture and being maintained as agriculture. So it does not, no longer has a qualifies for existing land in, in agriculture exemption. So that being said, the, everybody sort of said, well, where was the line? So I've, I've given you um, in my report, there are aerial photographs that show uh, 1990 through basically 2019 and the configuration of land. And this whole parcel, this whole Southern parcel, most of it uh, was agricultural land, was open field, it was pasture, there were cows on it. It was open land. Um, Aaron, if you could, could you scroll down or in those aerial photographs that show the, in my letter. Let me see if I can. Appreciate is this the letter that was just submitted or is this a different one? Well, it's the one that was submitted on the 4th of August. It should have been in the package last week, yes. Um, anyway, it, but it, it clearly shows that the land was in agriculture and the fields actually were in the wetland uh, in a lot of places. And, and what we're asking for is to go uh, down to the edge of what is currently being delineated as wetland. And so um, if you, we can see the aerial photographs, they were in, there, they were in the package. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Can you just all about 2010? I can't remember what the date was. They started; it started growing in. Um, so it has been in agriculture historically. It was in agriculture. So I wanted to uh, uh, bring that up. Um, also, the work does qualify as I used a, uh, I requested a limited project status. And it's not because of the Wetlands Protection Act because we don't need one under the Wetlands Protection Act. All the work is in the buffer zone. No work is occurring within the wetland, in the wet, within the wetland boundaries. So it doesn't need a, a, a limited project status. However, um, under your bylaw, in, in terms of if that, if that undisturbed buffer zone here, these, uh, this is 2019. This is, these are the existing conditions, um, basically. Sorry, I don't know why my computer is being haywire. Oh, yeah. So wait, just sorry, David, just sorry to interrupt you. Just to summarize to this point, what you're saying is because the land has always been in agriculture and we have evidence of that, we can say that under state Wetland Protection Act or under the Wetland Protection Act, you know, it's okay to work to come up to within five feet of the wetland. And yeah. now you're about to address what, how the town bylaw handles the situation. Right, correct, correct. And well, under, under the state act, you can work right down to the wetland boundary. Um, okay. And so I don't need a wetland, uh, a limited project status for the work under the, under the wetlands protection. Act. Mark Stenson pointed out in his, his comments that 
we didn't need it. We shouldn't have asked for a limited project because we didn't need one under the under the act. However, I was asking for it to justify it under your bylaw and okay. allow as a as a variance process to allow uh, you to permit it down to the wetland boundary. Okay, I see. And so it, it does qualify as new agriculture. It's being done with an NRSCS uh, plan. Um, there's no grade changes. Uh, it does qualify for, for um, I'm sorry, I should add it. And it's, even... it's actually, from what I understand from reading Michael Pill's memo, um, because our 30 foot no disturb applies specifically to development. So, um, for example, residential development has a 30 foot and commercial development has a 30 foot, but agriculture is not specifically addressed. Um, so, so that is why sort of that, that 30 foot is not a, um, it's not like there's a separate provision of our bylaw that says any work that occurs has to have a 30 foot no disturb. It's specific to certain types of work that are proposed, including residential, commercial, um, you know, industrial uses and that sort of thing. Thank you. That's very, that's a very good summary of how he, he did put it. He also pointed out in the, his letter that one of your interests is promote agriculture. And so he felt that this would be, that would also further back up your, your, you're uh, being allowed to permit something like this. Um, so it does qualify as a limited project in that as, as new land and agriculture, um, all fertilizers and pesticides will be used in accordance with the state and federal regulations. They really don't want to do that. They don't want to have, you know, they want to do it as organic as possible. Um, so it does qualify as a limited project and you could approve it under that. The, the owners of the property were grew up living next door to it and, and it was it had cows walking all over it and everything else. And when they, then the owner died and it, it went fallow. And then a, there was a, uh, they were work the, there was a plan coming forward to the 14 lot subdivision for this property and they wanted to preserve it. And so they wanted to, they wanted to restore it back to the agricultural land. And that's, that was, that is the, and maintain it as open space. The Northern portion of the property has got a forest stewardship plan on it that has been reviewed and approved by DCR. And it's their goal to, that, that main focus is wildlife enhancement, uh, invasive species removal, educational values. They're they want to tie into the, to the, the, the school right next door and maybe they had some trails through there that they, people can use. Um, there will be some, uh, you know, forest improvement, but that has to come forward with a forest cutting plan that hasn't, I don't, don't believe has come forward yet. So, so their, their goal is to keep this as open space um, and, and to turn it into a viable asset for the town as farmland and providing uh, food and uh, whatever they want to restore the buildings, they want to restore the barn. Their intentions are good, and unfortunately, it got a little bit ahead of the the brush. I got in there before it should have. Um, and but th so that's um, just the preserving it as open space, as opposed to a, a fourteen lot development. Um, and also the, the reason we'd like to go into the buffer is just to give us a little bit more farmland. I mean, they're trying to offset some of the costs of this by, by running it as a farm. And so the, uh, that 30 foot zone would eliminate uh, 0.8, acre, 0.8 acres of land, which is 12% of their land, which would be nice. It would be good to be, uh, have them be able to use that to recoup some of the financial. Um, the barns and existing structure will be rebuilt back on the existing footprint and foundation. It's something that I'm sure you routinely allow. So, uh, sorry, may, may I just jump, okay. jump in? Um, so we're talking that um, so far though, regardless of the Amherst bylaw, this is actually not a limit. This shouldn't, this wouldn't even fall under a limited project, correct? 
Well, so limited projects are when you are altering resource area um, and you can't mm -hmm. comply with the performance standards. So in this case, because they're actually not encroaching into the resource area, um, and the, the, I think the big question is riverfront um, oh. because th that is also um, natural heritage area. And I mean, they, they sort of overlap one another. Um, and I think uh, the question from natural heritage was just because the area that was identified as sort of um, the area to be farmed was, it wasn't entirely clear if that was gonna be hayland um, or if it was going to be, um, you know, crops that were planted there. And so I think that was, that was like the outstanding question as far as resource area impact. Right, and, that, and actually we, we were we never proposing to do any more work in, in well uh, under this application in the riverfront area. Mm -hmm. um, there were ideas thrown about about doing some work in that area to to help improve the turtle habitat, and we, we put that on hold for a while. Um, in terms of the and so there's no work that's occurring within any resource area, so it doesn't require a limited project. And I just threw that limp status in there to to. to if we, if that 30 foot buffer zone was an issue, this is another reason that you could allow it to go inside of there as a limited project in the, under the bylaw only and not under. Right. Okay, yeah, that's what I was getting at, okay. In terms of natural heritage, uh, we had a conversation, we had some emails go back back and forth today. I, I, I didn't realize you had to send them the hard copy to get the clock going again. I thought it was all, everybody was doing everything electronic. Nobody wants any paper anymore. Um, and so it, they, she, Rebecca started looking at it again and she came up with a question and that's what we proposed within the natural heritage area is mowing it once a year between November 1st and April 15th, which is a dormant season for this species of concern. Um, and she came back with the question is, how do they know, are they going to know where that line is on the ground during the season? Because where, where's the line between the productive farmland and that, that basically once a year uh, mowing of that area? And, and so I talked to the clients and, and um, Talk to them about doing a, a, a row of plantings um, of, of fruit trees, nut trees, uh, and probably and fruiting uh, shrubbery um, along that line in, in some sort of a pattern. I've sent that back to Rebecca as, as a suggestion, and I have not heard. It was the end more closer to the end of the day, so we we haven't heard on that yet. I'm expecting that we'll come to some res resolution of some some sort of a uh, solving of the problem, something like that. Yeah, and did you have a comment? I just want, yeah, I do have a comment and I wanna just, just for the sake of putting this out there from my perspective, I have no problem with what they're proposing to do on this application. Um, I think that they've gone through the process. They've really done a great job restoring the wetlands. They've put up um, barriers to prevent any further impacts to the resource area. Um, everything is very clearly marked on the site. Um, my only real hang up is natural heritage being satisfied. But other than that, I really don't have a problem with what they're proposing. So I just want to make sure that I put that out there because I know at the last meeting there were questions about, you know, the variance. And I think it's clear that the 30 foot no disturb doesn't apply to agriculture. And um, I think that it's clear that there are no resource areas being altered in this proposal. It's all buffer zone related work. So there's that limited project provision where you can't comply with the performance standards isn't even triggered under the Wetlands Protection Act. Thank you. I'm just putting that out there because I don't want to, I mean, if other folks have concerns, by all means, but from my perspective, I just wanted to share where I was coming from. Yeah, no, that's great, Erin. So maybe, Commissioner, does anyone, anyone have any clarifying questions about either what's been done, what's planning to be done, or like where we are in this process? Are we all kind of clear on the decision that we're making here? 
Okay. Yeah. So my only, I, I share your um, assessment of the situation, Erin. I think this has been a long process, but um, the results are that the, both the resource are in better shape and ultimately the plan for the use of the land um, is, is um, well intended and beneficial. Um, I, I do get a little confused about with this agricultural kind of um, lack of clarity with agricultural land and like how we can enforce our 30 foot buffer. So will it always come before us in this situation for us to make this decision, Erin? Um, I'm just thinking about like, are we making a decision that um, is gonna change the way we think about how we can protect that 30 foot buffer and other locations around town? Um, is there a precedent that we're setting, I guess? I don't know. No, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this up and flip to it really quickly so you can see um, where that provision falls under so you can see kind of how clear it is, but just give me one second to get there. Okay. I could be alone in that concern too. I just, um, we have a lot of agricultural, you know, haying farms along major wetland and river resources in our town. And I just want to make sure we're clear. I'm going to think, uh, excuse me, if I can just step in, uh, Jen, there's, um, if it's existing agriculture, it, it's, it is exempt. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. Well, I don't know. Is your your I think your uh, your bylaw has the same exemption that this follows the same exemptions as the state. So, mm -hmm. so the, they're mowing it. They're we're haying a field down in the wetland and and pulling out marsh hay. There, that's that is still legal. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and if they were doing it, if they've been doing it in agricultural use prior to inception of the Wetland Protection Act, and they, it's been in continuous agricultural use, hayed as hayland, then it's 100% legal. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but, I, but to get at your question, Jen, like residential lot, subdivision lot, commercial industrial driveways, parking areas, other roads, and then vernal pools have their own separate, um, you know, the 100 foot. But mm -hmm. these, these setbacks, these no work distance setbacks are specific to these uses these proposed activities. Yep, that's pretty damn clear. Okay, great. Well, that's helpful. Thank you, David and Aaron for answering that. Did anyone else have any questions or comments? Um, okay, well, so what would be helpful at this point? It sounds like we just need to fit, come to a resolution with national natural heritage. So we have to continue this to our next meeting anyway. Um, is there anyone, anyone else needs in order to close this hearing? Would we, anyone need any more information? Because we will hopefully vote on this at our next meeting. Yeah, and I mean, I, and Dave, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on this and Jen, what your thoughts are on this, but one option is if we closed the public hearing tonight and issued the order of conditions at the next meeting, similar to what we did with Tofino, mm -hmm. that's an option. And that way it kind of gives the applicant some closure. Um, but of course, that means that we're going to have some kind of resolution from natural heritage that we can incorporate into our conditions at the next meeting. So um, that the clock starts ticking on the 21 days. So it's really kind of you guys. Could you could you draft? I don't know how you set up your writing of your orders of conditions. Could you have a? I I would prefer if if you're not going to if we're not going to close it tonight or you want to know the conditions yeah i'd rather keep it open and it but if you could write a draft the order that you would approve next time because they would like to get started on the barn and things like that and 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 start working with it before the end of the season and i'm assuming i'm going to be giving you an uh, a, a revised plan that shows what we're doing along that limit and also we're going to actually ask for an, a little bit more fencing along the uh, along the trail uh, uh, that comes down the west side of the property, but anyway. Um, so, okay, so it's on. Keep, keep it open. Yep. Okay. Any issues that come up that we could address next time, and then but get the order of conditions. That would be a great favor to us. And, and, and I, I, 
not ready to close tonight. I didn't. I yeah. tried to get one again, but it didn't happen. Okay. No, that that all sounds copacetic to me, Aaron. Unless you have any final concerns. No, I'll be ready to run with it. Um, and basically, I'll just have it drafted and say, "Here's my recommended conditions. I recommend to approve with these conditions," and then just kind of get it out the door. Okay. Awesome. Um, last question for me, are either Jason Venditti or Venditti, or I know Mickey Marcus would have been here for the Fearing Street, but then he's involved in this project, right? Yeah, if they're here for the Lincoln, the Lincoln Street discussion, which is following this. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so no, it doesn't look like we have any public comments. So with that, I think we just need a motion to continue. I move right. we continue. Oh, go. You want to go for it? No, I, you got it, Anna. All right. Uh, move we continue this um, hearing for 2014 Pomeroy Lane to uh, September, August 25th at 7.50 p.m. Second. All right. Voice vote. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Who did I forget? I think that's it, me, I'm an I. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Dave. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Be good, take care. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, sorry about my voting problem, guys. When I'm like looking at the scroll on the top of my screen, you all change order like in the middle of when we're trying to do a voice vote. <laughs> It's as long I as you get us all, we don't care about the order. How do I lock it, Anna? Can I lock it? Really good question. <laughs> I think it depends on who talks. Yeah, that's why it changes. But you're doing a good job. You have not. Okay, I just wanted to let you guys know I'm not. It, it's like a legitimate <laughs> technical issue I'm having. Okay, moving on. So that was our last hearing, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And now we are going to, um, where do you want to head here, Aaron? We're going to other but informal discussion of Lincoln Ave apartments. Correct. And yep. this must be why Mickey's here. Okay. I'm yep. here now. I gotcha. So they've requested a, like a sort of five minute informal presentation on, um, there is an existing order of conditions for UMass for their operation and maintenance plan. Um, and so they're basically presenting what they're proposing underneath that order of conditions umbrella. Okay, great. I appreciate that. I was involved in that blanket NOI process, and this was one thing that was important. So thanks for being here, um, Mickey and Jason. How are you? Good evening, y'all. Uh, you know, if I can just start for a second, I'll let Jason uh, describe the projects, but um, we sent Aaron um, a plan that was done by Weston and Sampson engineers, and, and UMass is planning to demolish uh, two apartment facilities. Uh, one, um, the North Village Apartments, and the second is the Lincoln Avenue Apartments. Uh, both of them have portions of the work in buffer zone. Uh, in the orders of conditions, it requires a review by conservation agent or the commission. So uh, the plans um, have been submitted. They show erosion control around the entire developed part of the property. There's no new work. Um, and uh, because both of the properties have more than uh, one acre of work, uh, they will go through the SWIP. But uh, J Jason can just give you an overview of what's going on and what, what, the, what the university is planning. Good evening, y'all. Yes, uh, the reason why we requested this rather than just doing this standard notification process that is defined by our comprehensive notice of intent we wanted to, um, after having a couple of meetings that we had had with Jason Skeels and Guilford Mooring and Dave Zomack and others, um, we thought it'd be best to kind of plant the seed in regard to where we are. So when you see the type of work that is ongoing on the campus in multiple locations, that you knew what was going on and you didn't think that there was something that was uh, differential or varying or impeding of any resources areas. So that's why we really wanted to come in uh, tonight and discuss with you and kind of lay out where we're going. Um, so in short, the uh, campus has uh, basically selected a developer that is going to, uh, is under design right now in regard to developing the pro both parcels of the North Village and the Lincoln Apartments sites. And 
Right now, that is uh, very early in the design process. We have included the town. Actually, they have the current plan set that we have. Uh, we thought it'd be best to actually include them, referring to Jason Steele, Gilbert Mooring, and others in the design review because they're basically within town. They're, they're distal from our normal campus properties. So this process that we're going through here as a notice of intent will be forthcoming um, when we go to further design processes. Uh, right now, we're looking to do demolition. The campus is really going to procure the demolition by itself to allow that to happen sometime early summer. Um, but due to multiple reasons and you know, COVID being one of them, the campus has agreed to basically procure those uh, through the developer to allow them to do the demolition with their construction management firm that they have. So basically uh, Suffolk is a construction management firm. Uh, they have filed the SWIP. They have uh, begun the process of starting to do dig safe and those kind of things. But what really what we wanted to do is tell you that you'll see as part of our filing for the comprehensive notice of intent, you'll see that we are doing demolition. We are making you describe the resources and the SWIP notification process that we have and the measures that we have. Uh, but basically what I wanted to be here from the campus's point of view is to instill to you that we'll be coming back in front of you with a notice of intent uh, with the development process uh, that we're still reviewing. The town is reviewing also. Um, we're right now in comment stage, so we're awaiting comments from Guilford and Jason and others, uh, as we are also providing comments back to the developer. So, but basically that's what we're here for, is to basically tell you that we're looking to start demolition sometime early uh, August. Right now, it looks like, I say early August, it's already the 11th, but uh, we actually don't have a firm date for when um, that contractor will have uh, a de basically demolition contractor mobilizing to the site. We have um, basically have assurance that we will be following the construction plans that we had had uh, originally laid out to be followed, which basically follows all the SWIP all applications that we have. We've coordinated all these plans with Jason and Guilford and we were basically just wanted to, you know, tell you guys what's going on is why we're here. So we wanted to be an informal conversation um, just so you know what's going on and basically tell you that we'll be coming back in front of you for a formal notice of intent for what development will look like, but it's too early in the stage of design to be able to present that to you. So that's pretty much why we're here. No, I appreciate that. I was part, I think Fletcher, at least Fletcher um, and I were both here when we did the um, comprehensive NOI. And I know this was something that was like a big part of that was making sure that we had this open communication, especially with projects like this. So I really appreciate that you guys are here and, and made the time to notify us. Um, mm -hmm. Aaron, do you have any concerns um, based on looking at these plans? I mean, I'm, I've got them pulled up on my computer so I can like see what's going on here. And it looks like the erosion control is in pretty good shape from what I can read as I zoom in and scroll around. Um, so it's yeah. a 300 series plan. So like uh, 300, 301, 302 are, are the North Village apartments and they show the, all the erosion control on yep. the whole site. Yeah, so I got that. Yeah, plan uh, C-303 is Lincoln, and that shows yeah. the brush control. They, they're using uh, compost socks, straw bales, uh, silt fence, straw waddles. And there's a, a plan called D-100 that has all the roach controls uh, listed. I found that one, yeah. My apologies. I should have mentioned my, I'm sorry, Aaron. I should have mentioned the current schedule that we're seeing from the development team and the demolition contractors that they're still procuring. Uh, right now, it looks as though they're going to start fully on North Village, which we think sometime mid-August, end of August. When I say mid-August, we're already mid-August. They just, just filed a dig safe. So that by itself on campus terms is 10 days. So we still have a lot of permitting. They still have a lot of permitting to go through. So it's probably not going to be into probably like the 23rd or so of August that they'll even mobilize to the site. The current plan that they have, which the campus is part and partial to, is that North Village will go first and then Lincoln Apartments will follow. So Lincoln Apartments is probably not going to start until mid-October is probably a good timeline to gauge here. The timeline is still dynamic in regard to how it sequences through with North Village and notifications on roads. We want to make sure that the uh, town's included in their sewer that comes through um, that we want to make sure we relocate properly. There's, there's a lot of things to coordinate still. So those, that, that coordination of Lincoln Apartments is a little uh, delayed in regard to 
that probably won't start until mid-October. North Village is looking to probably be somewhere around the week of the 23rd, just so you know. Should have okay. mentioned that, I'm sorry. My apologies okay. for interrupting again. No, that's good to know. Thanks, Jason. And yeah, that's helpful. Thanks for, I think I had was on the right plan, but that was helpful, Mickey, thank you. Um, Aaron. Yeah, I was just gonna Aaron. say, it would be great if we could do a pre-construction and also if I could have contact information for Suffolk um, during the process. Um, those two things so it would just be sort of a standard thing that I would do for every site to make sure I can get out and look at erosion controls and have the um, contact information for the contractor just in case any problems come up during the project life. Great. I don't know if this is informal so I can just not like a uh, back and forth thing so I can say so I have asked them for that exact same thing. Uh, we have asked for that type of exact coordination to be discussed with the development team as for, we have Balfour Betty Campus Solutions, who has hired Suffolk, who are then going to procure a demolition contractor. We also share that concern of who do we call, who do they call. Um, if there's an incident on site, I mean, I take the worst case scenario, there's an accident on site. Did they call the police? Did they call UMass police? Did they call town police, Amherst Fire? All those things are going to be resolved uh, over the next couple of weeks. We have asked for a formal uh, meeting with them. Uh, right now, it looks like that's gonna be on the 23rd, just as they begin to mobilize to the site. Uh, I was debating actually inviting Jason Steeles to that. Is that something, Aaron, you might want to attend for some portion of, or should we just follow up with you some kind of correspondence saying, here are the contact information in regard to who you should be contacting and- Yeah, I mean, I, I my primary concern is looking at erosion controls, just making sure that they're installed yeah. prior to work. So I don't wanna that's good point. pick up that's any, any time from other folks if you know if literally it's it's generally like a five to ten minute walk I get the call I go out there I walk the line I say green light and I have the contact information for the um, contractor and that's that's basically what I'm right. asking for yeah we have not seen their sequence plan we anticipate them starting in the front of the complex towards North Pleasant Street and working the way all the way back towards the end and considering that's like a 32 acre site that could be a month and a half, two months before they actually you know, get to the, all the way to that west edge. Those okay. are the kind of things I might want to include you in regard to their sequence and schedule. So yeah, yeah, and ADI. I mean, I can be on call. Like if they know, you know, the first section of site is going to start this date, I can come out and look at it. And then if they know the second section is going to start, they can just I can you know provide my cell phone yeah. number to you guys so that you I can they can just reach out or email me and let me know. And it doesn't have to be like a big uh, formal meeting on site with everybody it can more or less yeah, we've asked for that so yeah those things, yep. but yes i understand what you're saying yeah yep. so you know what i'll do is i'll uh, include you in the correspondence that we're going to have to set up the communication chain because a lot of that's going to be like life safety and first responders and all that stuff that goes with normal construction projects considering that north village is distal from campus it it warrants us having a, a further conversation than we normally do you know we build all these buildings all over campus and we have that protocol of how who gets called when and on what type of circumstance, but this one's a little different. So we'll probably include you in the first kickoff of, hey, just so you know, here's the correspondence that we have. This is the person that's gonna be on site. This is the name of the person doing the inspections for SWIP and mm -hmm. those kind of things. The stuff that's yep. related to you, but yep. you, you might be included in a longer list of correspondence like as relates to the town. Yep. You know, we're working around town sewer. We're working around town drainage that comes off from North Pleasant Street. So. There are other factors that correlate to the town that we want to make sure we're inclusive of correspondence to. So, sounds so, good. Great. That's great. Thank you for the extra effort for the communication. Hey, hey John, uh, if I can just add one other thing. So, um, the, the way uh, the orders of conditions are, are written for UMass's work. So, this type of project falls under. Uh, maintenance, but it does require the commission to review and say, yeah, that's okay. Um, but new work uh, does require a notice of intent. And that's why Jason was saying that uh, you would expect to see any redevelopment to come back before you as a, a new project with a notice of intent. On a full NOI, right, gotcha. Yep, so you're just notifying us about the demolition. Yeah. Good. Got it. Yeah, great. The Thank design you. team the developer has hired, um, you've seen before, we've been in front of you before, so it's, it's a very similar team that has been with you before. In fact, uh, SWCA now, sorry, Mickey, but I always call you New Environmental, still have it. But SWCA and Niche Environmental, or Niche Engineering, has worked with us on, actually, I think some of you are here still, 
when we um, did the ILC, which is what it's called now, then new academic classroom buildings, what we called when we permitted it, when we went for and did the Porta Dam to hold back the pond to do all the work, the restoration of the dike. And we recommended, which you guys agreed to, which is great, that we install um, more technics units south of the pond to allow that to be protected rather than downstream, which has been, we think, successful. We have actually had a lot of debris that's coming down the Tan Brook there. So as we further that permit process, you're actually going to see niche engineering, probably with SWCA with us, I, I think, to basically come in front of you again to say, this is what we're proposing. Um, right now, that design is not furthered. Uh, we don't know exactly what's going to happen with that development site. So far, they're basically not truly adjusting Tanbrook more than um, their development is going to be to the west of the overflow piping. So uh, we had thought initially that we would do some kind of head wall reconstruction, some kind of improvements to that. Right now, we're not sure if that's going to be in there. And again, this is very informal. Um, I told all this to Jason and Guilford a couple weeks ago, so I just want to tell you the campus is still evaluating options to that. We still are seeing a lot of uh, runoff that has a lot of sedimentation, a lot of debris, a lot of um, concrete blocks, bricks, sticks, et cetera, that are coming down Tan Brook that are getting, luckily, getting caught by that storm scepter unit that we put in, excuse me, Vortechnus unit that I put in, uh, that's before the pond. So I'm very happy that we put that in there. Um, and eventually, you'll see with SWCA, eventually us coming in front of you to talk about a uh, pond management plan that's much more further than anything you've seen before. We'd like to do a redredging, and we're coming to go through that process, too. So I, I thought I'd take the opportunity while we're here in front of you to say, just so you know, um, the campus has a lot that we'd like to talk to you with, that we'd like to include you with, that we're trying to be aggressive with, which is all great stuff. But right now, it's too early. But we didn't want you to see demolition ongoing and think, oh boy, here's UMass doing this without telling us. All of that is going to be formally coming in front of you with an NOI, and we'll have the design team that's for that project presenting it to you. There'll be probably a separate effort that's going to go on on directly related to Tanbrook and Campus Pond um, stuff. So that's I just want to plant those seeds that I, I anticipate over the next couple, I would say 18 months, we'll be seeing a lot more of you guys, which is good for us because these efforts are part and parcel to MS4 and where we go from here. So and we're looking good. for that partnership going forward. So yeah, I know Mickey, you came in front of us before about the campus pond dredging too. So right. wait, this has all been on the radar. Yeah, much appreciated. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. We don't want to dredge the pond until we know what's going to happen with the head wall. Mm -hmm. and we don't know where the, exactly the complex uh, that's going to take over Lincoln Apartments is going to be. We're not sure if that head wall, which we think is an opportunity as a campus to further protect the pond, if that's going to be in that project or we're going to create a separate project to manage that. So that's where we're coming from as a campus. But again, you're correct, Jen, that that okay. is exactly what we will we'll be seeing you guys again for all these efforts, So, which we think is great. That okay. partnership is great. Great. Thank you. Thank Are you, you talking about um, uh, daylighting Tam Brook and making like a little river walkway by the Lincoln Apartments? It's in discussion. Don't open it. Don't open a can of worms. We're in discussion. All, <laughs> all, all, all options are on the table. We want to improve water quality. We've um, we've had a couple of rain <laughs> events in July. That. We've had a couple of rain events in July that have tested the ability for us now. So that uh, that used to surcharge over that parking lot a lot, and we had debated at the time before before we put the storm scepter in and before we put that vortex unit in, we had debated whether or not that was gonna be something that we consider because it'd be, we thought a good thing for water quality and uh, storm water management. But since we've now cleaned out that culvert to the point where it actually water is going to the pond, that's improved water quality to the pond. So it's changed our dynamics and that the Boyden fields that used to flood don't flood as much. So there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot to that. So yes, yeah, Fletcher will be, indeed looking at at this stage i'm not sure if that development is going to do that we've debated it and it's not defined as to what's in the project or not but ecosystem services urban heat island mitigation you know living classroom functioning yep. wetlands are better for air quality and water quality yep. <laughs> colored water is not the healthiest water we agree we know <laughs> yep. Just yep. That thick. nobody knows it better than you guys though so yeah, we're studying it. Actually, we started uh, separate studies, even with campus uh, agents referring to academics to like start tracking water quality separate from MS4, just so we can start informing that a little bit more. So 
Yeah, measure flow in there too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Did it rain in July? I'm not sure. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know. Almost, somebody, over 10 inches at, over 10 inches at my house recording we should ask yep. a hydrologist that question i don't know um yep, record. that's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah all right well this is great i really appreciate it any other comments or questions commissioners okay well i think i, I was going to say my only comment would be that over the over what's come up along the way we should do some focusing on Tan Brook overall. We've got fearing, we've got other things. Tan Brook should be focused on. We were, well, that's what where Fletcher and I have been uh, been going there, Larry. Thanks for <laughs> coming in yeah. back of the train. And to punctuate okay. that, we we are we are trying to do something internally. Um, Comprehensive. So more to come on that later. I don't want to derail exactly. anything. <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. We're the same way. It's. It's a hot topic for us too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Big, big thinking on that. Okay. Well, thank you both. I think in the interest of time, I'll we'll let you go. Um, we've had some pretty epic summer night meetings lately, so we really appreciate the communication, um, and we look forward to seeing you again thank soon. Thank Great. You all for your we'll time. be back soon. Good all right. Thank Thanks you very, very much. much. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna. This was like a sneaky long one. Again. Well, I'm gonna come in like a lion and go out like a lamb. We only have we only have one uh, certificate of compliance. Uh, 31 Fox Glove Lane. I was out there today. The site looks fine. Um, so I would recommend that we issue a complete certification out there. If anyone wants to see pictures, I'll pull them up. I'm comfortable um, following Aaron's guidance on that. Uh, so I issue, is it just issuing sort of, you said cert, cert, certificate of compliance? Issue a full certification. Full certification. Thank you. Um, I move to issue a full certification of compliance to 31 Foxglove Lane. Second. Okay. Nobody talk. Voice vote. Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And I, I'm an aye. Okay. That's it. That's all I got for you. All right. That was super productive. Thank you. <laughs> that was like how we wanted the, the NOI with UMass to work. So yeah. I don't know, Fletcher, if you remember how much hemming and hawing we did about that. Um, there but that's good though. because Aaron, that way you are in the loop um, so that when people are calling and there are rainstorms in the middle of October and they've got that whole site opened up. <laughs> at least yeah. In the well, and just so you know, you guys know, because I know we had that um, RDA for Amherst College, I encourage them to follow the same exact process as the um, O&M plan for Amherst College. So they should be coming in with that at some point. Okay, cool. That's, That's great. great. Yeah. All right. Any um, final comments or questions? All right. Awesome. Um, I guess we just need a motion to adjourn. I, I got it. Aha. Uh -huh. You didn't say uh -huh. it. You just said you got it. That's not right. a real thing. So okay, moved. I'm with you. I'm with you. So moved. Okay. So moved. Okay. <laughs> I think we're going to give it to Larry. Oh, we need a so second. Moved. We need a second. I adjourn. Second. <laughs> oh, we got a second from Anna. Voice vote, Larry. Aye. Anna. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Hi. And I'm an I. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. You're Excellent. rock stars. Enjoy. Good, Good work. Till next time. See you soon. <laughs>